Let me take you back to the Supreme Court because we are getting the details of that really significant judgment about presidential immunity. And it is slightly complicated, but uh, uh, in a sense, the court is deciding partial immunity and is sending the case back to the lower courts. Let me read you a couple of sentences because the US Supreme Court uh, finds that former presidents are entitled to absolute immunity for prosecutions for actions within their constitutional authority, but the court goes on to find that the former presidents are not entitled to immunity from prosecutions for actions taken in a private capacity. So you see both elements of that decision. So that is why it is a partial immunity judgment. Uh, we were talking in the last few minutes as we were expecting this to uh, Rachel Polwaz and also to Michael Starr Hopkins. So let's return to both of them and get their snapshot reaction to what we've just heard. Rachel, to you first of all. Line, um, to be clear, but uh, the Supreme Court's job is to issue legal principle, not determine facts. And so this is a decision based on a legal principle. The court says the president has absolute immunity for official acts. The question for Donald Trump is going to be, what acts did he take that were purely unofficial and personal? And so some of the most critical questions for him in this case are yet to be determined by the lower courts. Michael, your thoughts. This is an extension for Donald Trump. Now the uh, lower court is going to have to be a trier of fact, and they're going to have to decide what was an official act and what was an unofficial act. You know, I think that the politicization of this decision is going to be really the, the bad thing for this court. The fact that this was a 6-3 decision and not a 9-0 decision, that would have been something that really would have been good for the strength of the judiciary and people's faith in the court system. Now, much of America is just going to believe this was decided among party lines, like, in fact, it probably was. Well, it's interesting uh, you make that point because I hadn't read uh, how the court and the justices split, but I'd asked you before in the Directly. run up to it, were you worried about the fact that it's a 6-3 split of conservative judges and you said you had concerns and presumably the ruling, if it is that split, have underlined those concerns that uh, you were worried about? Yeah, I mean, it, so I, I've seen the split. It came down directly by uh, party lines. The justices who were appointed by Republicans, including Donald Trump, ruled in his favor. Uh, and the justices who uh, were appointed by Democratic justices or Democratic presidents, rather, uh, ruled in favor of what I would say is democracy. Uh, this is only going to go further to erode, erode trust in our system. Uh, and I think it actually is going to allow Donald Trump to even further push the boundaries of what's constitutional and what's not. Rachel, when we were talking before, I think Michael was making the point, or maybe it was you, that uh, uh, the court had already ruled that uh, 88 days were required before this would come to trial. Now we're heading back to the lower courts. It, it must rule out any sort of potential for this case to come to trial before November and the election. I just don't know how quickly the lower courts can move. But again, that was a timeline set by the lower courts, not by the Supreme Court. Um, and as given how complicated this decision is, there are a number of, of, of factual issues that will have to be sorted out by the district court in this in this situation. That will not be a speedy process. And is that decision when it comes in the lower courts, is that challengeable as well? Could that potentially go back to the Supreme Court or, or it doesn't work that way? That decision on the merits, on the facts, can be appealed. Um, the defendant has a right to appeal any criminal case up to uh, federal appellate courts. The Supreme Court's review in this country is discretionary, meaning the Supreme Court is not required to take any case. Um, and in fact, they only end up taking about 5 to 6% of the cases that they are asked to hear.